it all starts with this paper. And the first hour, we're going to talk about what autistic spectrum disorder looks like, what it is, what goes into the definition, um, because this is a condition that's defined clinically. There's no lab test, and even though there are many different behavior rating scales, there's the ADOS and the MCHAT and the GARS and the CARS and all kinds of other scales, those are all designed to capture the clinical behavior of the child and or adult and convert that to numbers to kind of um, give it some objectivity. But at bottom, we are still defining autistic spectrum disorder based on its clinical features. So in that sense, we are living in the 1880s when infectious diseases were defined by the color and the smell of the sputum rather than what grew in the bacteriology lab because people didn't have bacteriology labs in uh, 1880. Those uh, did not yet exist. So we are, uh, do the math, about 130 years behind the rest of medicine in terms of being able to specify the root causes of the condition we're talking about. And I often feel like a horse and buggy doctor who's been catapulted into the future, Michael J. Fox fashion. But this is where it all begins. This is a wonderful paper. If you have not read it, I recommend it to you. It's, uh, there's a link to it on the web. The link is in my book. Um, and there's the title of it down there, but it's actually available free of charge. And uh, Leo Connor was a child psychiatrist. He was in uh, academic practice at the Johns Hopkins University Medical Center in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. I actually met him in 1978 when I was in my fellowship and he was approaching the end of his career and I heard him speak and he was a brilliant man. So he begins this paper, uh, which was published in 1943, and that's important because it says that this paper was five years gestating before he put it into print. He says, since 1938, there have come to our attention a number of children whose condition differs so markedly and uniquely from anything reported so far that each case merits and, I hope, will eventually receive a detailed consideration of its fascinating peculiarities. Now, he could not possibly get that opening sentence past a journal editor today, but I love his English as well as his descriptive prose, which has never been equaled, much less exceeded. Um, we are now approaching the publication of the DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, fifth edition of the American Psychiatric Association, and they are still trying to catch up with Leo Connor's 1943 paper. For a complete copy of Dr. Connor's paper, go to www.drcopeland.com and click on Related Links.